This is the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. I'm wearing a green shirt. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And if the content works for you, hit the like button and leave a comment. Today, we have a radical idea with a radical thumbnail. Has Bitcoin and Coinbase and crypto been saved? Just one word. We have respect for everybody and what they believe. What we believe in is crypto. Specifically, Michael Saylor, Coinbase, right? And we believe in Michael Saylor. We're going to talk about Coinbase. We're going to talk about the Salesforce layoffs, the Bank of Japan, okay? And how all of this fits together for a bullish picture that people haven't fully digested yet. So, you know, ETH was up 4% at one point, which is practically a God candle versus what we've been living with. So don't go anywhere because we've had the call on crypto equities from a PowerPoint from two videos ago, and we're off to a good start for the year. And I couldn't think of a better group of people to come through for than you. Whether you've been here for three years or you just got here, you're not too late. You're not too early. You're right on time. Speaking of right on time, GF first on the stream, Rugby Performance Lab says, finally catching you on time. Joseph Ryan, good morning from California. Okay. Jan says, good evening. Happy and healthy new year to me and my family. I appreciate that. Thank you. Right. Caleb from North Carolina, crypto at 2 a.m. Kim Craig is here. Christopher Cotta from Omaha, LFG. Couldn't have said it any better. Okay, JP Stanley, hello from the UK. Is the bull market back? I think it is for January, and I'm buying dips, not investment advice. Okay, Andre says, please send Doge to the moon. I would love to. Just waiting for Elon, right? Everybody was talking about Tesla going down yesterday. The video from yesterday was like, yeah, there was GAN support at 105. The thumbnail has a little Ethereum exclamation point on it. Everyone's talking about negative stuff. You should be talking about positive stuff. Israr is here, Sydney 747. Welcome. Okay. Driftless Crypto, welcome. Arafat's here, Richard Barry, Augusta, Georgia. Right. Kabor is here from Liverpool, Chatty Man. Manchester, our friends in England are back. James Hadley, the Bulls are back. Not only are the Bulls back, but the Fudsters are caught flat-footed here. Absolutely flat-footed. I'm diving into the news right now. <laughs> okay, there was a rumor that somebody was going to get a letter of non-action from the SEC Okay, I don't know if this is a letter of non-action, but Coinbase just settled with New York regulators for $100 million, a $50 million fine. Regulators fund themselves with fines, and they got to spend $50 million on compliance for not doing KYC. So everybody was bearish crypto equities going into this year, and oh, Coinbase up 15% as of this video. Okay, it's time to start imagining positive outcomes for January, 
And I think for the summer rally, and some of this stuff is so destroyed, like all of Web3, right? There could be a trade location, dare I say it, a victory, or you could get saved on your trade location if you can figure out, okay, I personally got involved in December, right? Because I was like, you know what? You know, you want to know what I bought? Leave it in the comments below and we'll talk about it. Bottom line is everyone is interested in FUD. Every article on CNBC this morning was bearish. Every single one. So Coinbase saved from at least a level of regulatory uncertainty from New York. Now, Michael Saylor, okay? This is worth going in detail about. Micro strategy to launch a Bitcoin lightning solutions. Okay. The company's Bitcoin arm has been able to have a deep focus as it seeks out to branch of regular software applications. So micro strategy software company. You buy an enterprise application and all your software internally runs on a micro strategy platform, your data storage, whatever, similar to Oracle. Said MicroStrategy is looking to branch out of regular applications into Bitcoin. MicroStrategy can leverage its existing knowledge to provide enterprises with tools for the Bitcoin Lightning ecosystem. Okay. Areas that MicroStrategy is exploring for Lightning services include online content monetization, enterprise marketing, web paywalls, internal corporate controls. And in, Bitcoin can be used as an incentive to post reviews or give feedback. Bitcoin branches off in the software. Does that sound familiar? That sounds a lot like Web3. And in my humble opinion, Michael Saylor just made himself the Vitalik of Bitcoin. In other words, if you want a new feature added to Bitcoin, who do you call exactly? Well, nobody. It's decentralized and Bitcoin maxis, you know, they like that. And of course, Bitcoin being decentralized looks like, I don't know, it looks, everyone's like, oh my God, Bitcoin is a problem. No, FTX was a problem. But now we have somebody willing to develop software on top of Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin joined Web3 and no one's paying attention. Michael Saylor may have saved Bitcoin. This is bigger, I think, than when he was piling in at 10 and 20K in 2021. Just the fact that somebody is going to start doing development on top of Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin has no privacy feature. Bitcoin has no this. Bitcoin has no that. Well, he's looking to change that. Just the sheer announcement of this at a point where everyone's bearish feels very significant. Okay. Meanwhile, the Bank of Japan announced a fourth day of unscheduled bond buying. So let's back up. Coinbase, Michael Saylor, those are good news at the, that's good news at the micro level. Okay. The, the crypto specific level. At the macro level, the Bank of Japan has started printing money on an unscheduled basis. What does that mean? Uh, it means they're panicking. And for good reason. Their bond market has fallen apart, right? The global inflation problem can hurt their bond market to such a degree that the solvency of the country could be threatened. Is it threatened right now? Not right this second, but if they don't get on top of the problem, the Bank of Japan, Japanese banks, and Japanese insurance companies are going to have unimaginable losses on holdings of Japanese bonds. So they're going to print money and buy the bonds and support the market. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry. They're printing money. They're printing money massively. They are telling the Federal Reserve that we don't care how much you guys tighten. You guys want to tighten? Excellent. We will just print away. Now, why should you take these guys seriously? Well, back in the day of perma QE, when Ben Bernanke was doing $85 billion a month in QE, printing $85 billion a month and injecting that into the financial system, the Japanese came along and said, you know what? We need QE too. 
and we're going to do $85 billion a month, which is amazing because they, their economy, they are one third the size of the United States. So, you know, the Japanese government doing $85 billion a month is almost like a guy who weighs 160 bench pressing 350. Okay. Just huge. So if you think these guys are playing around, you best think again. Now, I know crypto people are not doing that. Crypto people are like, ooh, an upside catalyst. This is what got it going last night, right? This is what got it going last night. Now, meanwhile, okay, meanwhile, Salesforce, a Web2 company, regrettably lays off 7,000 people. And there's nothing to celebrate when it comes to layoffs. But there are several points here that we need to wake up on. First of all, this idea that the Fed needs to drive rates to 5% so that everyone who works at Salesforce goes down and fills in all the open positions that Chick-fil-A feels insidious and sad. Okay. The Federal Reserve has done its job to try to fight inflation. And if they ram rates any higher, this is what's going to happen. And this could get even worse as January earnings come around. Everyone's like, oh my God, I'm afraid of January. You know, the fourth quarter earnings for companies in the stock market gets released in January. And what do you think they're going to do if they have bad earnings? Well, they're going to announce layoffs. They're going to announce layoffs. And, you know, how many layoffs have to be announced before the Federal Reserve wakes up and stops hiking rates? So there's all this stuff that's hit the tape this morning. Crypto's up, but crypto's not like smoking up. Maybe it takes another day or two, or maybe they just all figure it out at four o'clock today, New York time. Web two is contracting before our eyes. Okay. So web two pro companies have got problems. Technology companies are having difficulty growing web revenue. Chat, GBT, Microsoft is jumping in on that. You know, it's almost like Lord of the Flies where they're actually, you know, they're, they're, try they're trying to eat each other almost. Right. Microsoft going after Google by integrating chat GBT into Bing. Final point, everybody is talking about crypto FUD and no one is talking about Web3. No one wanted to hear about equities in crypto like Coinbase or HUT or any of these stocks that are up 15% today. Nobody wanted to talk about Ethereum. Right. Everybody's talking about, you know, the mistakes of the crypto elites. And everybody forgot about why we're in crypto to begin with, right? Moon Sector 7 from Norway is here, okay? Hurls is here with some sheepdog love. I appreciate that, okay? All right? Uh, <laughs> somebody says, does anyone else look at price action when Bill talks expecting price movement? Laugh out loud. Okay, yes, right? Uh I, I'm not sure that people have returned their focus to price. And the bottom line is here that we need, it's time to start talking about Ethereum and crypto. Now, let me jump into Bitcoin on a daily chart with some rare hidden pivot analysis on a daily chart. Normally, I'm not doing it on a daily chart. So hidden pivot analysis on a daily chart goes like this. Normally, if you break this first level, this 25% level, that's 16,900. If Bitcoin breaks through that level and holds that level, I don't see any reason why you can't see 19.1. Again, you know, we're taking a lot of risk. Not we, there's no we. I don't work for we anymore. I work for me. All right. I, do, I do work for a we, but the YouTube channel is under my influence. I'm taking risk with today's thumbnail because Bitcoin was assumed to be going down with, you know, all the liquidations that need to happen. People haven't considered what Bitcoin could do in January. Right. And nobody's talking about 19,000. Now I've been droning on and on about ETH and I'm pretty sure that everybody on the call ha has been checking this out, but you know, ETH is already breaking out of its hidden pivot structure looking to head towards 1425. You know, don't see any reason why that can't happen. And if you start looking at the DeMarc work, right, anywhere you go, right? So this is 90 minute ETH. 
DeMarc Wirt counts a certain set of conditions. Like the, the low is lower than the low one day ago. So, you know, you'll go to 13. That's another set of conditions. And then you'll go down and you'll hit a nine bottom and then you'll go up. But wait a minute, I'm looking at this Ethereum chart, this 90 minute chart, and it just started counting again. Like it just started. So theoretically, if Ethereum holds up, you could have six more 90 minute candles up. Let's go to Bitcoin daily. Okay. Bitcoin daily on DeMarc, you know, we're at a DeMarc four. Now, sometimes after the four candle, you do get a dip. But I'm wondering if everyone's too scared of the dip now, right? But at four o'clock, they won't be, right? And this thing could get crazy. Meanwhile, you know, like I said, any dips over the next two days, even if they seem sharp, may be like major opportunities for this thing to have another leg because this thing in Bitcoin is telling you there could be, there could be five more updates. There could be more than that. January looks positive. Let's go over to ETH daily. Okay. Okay. Resistance at 1291. Uh, I don't know why it wouldn't get there. Obviously, the brutal false breakout that occurred in mid-December, right? Which, you know, ironically also showed up on the hand-kept GAN charts that are both now on my Twitter and on this YouTube channel as three-minute videos. So if you're into that, check that out. 1291 in ETH, if ETH breaks through that and holds, then you know it's on. Now, I know you're not supposed to buy resistance, but I have a feeling the entire market is like, oh, well, you know, ETH is up 60 bucks. I can't buy it. Hmm. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Brick Dreams is here. Right, our captain through the seven seas of crazy markets, sir. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Okay, Joseph Ryan, hello, Moon Sector Seven, Kim Craig, just turned the computer on after taking a month off. Good sign, I hope. I think so. I think we are witnessing revulsion in crypto and people caught way off guard, way off guard. Okay, four hour ETH on DeMarc. Okay, see how it goes up. And then every time it tries to rally, it comes off. That could be bearish or people might interpret that as bearish. But if it doesn't go down, this is people taking profits or getting out. It's people selling the first uptick. Meanwhile, it's entirely possible. And we did this yesterday with Litecoin. Has anyone thought that this from... The second half of December could be a base. Meanwhile, this whole thing could be a base. This whole area, right? Everything in November and December because ETH has done nothing. And anybody who's been watching me since 2019 is familiar with the saying, the bigger the base, the higher into space. Meaning if the base on a four-hour chart is like two months long, when this thing takes off, I mean, there's no reason, ETH, I have a DeMarc sort of a DeMarc-GAN hybrid moving average system. No reason ETH can't go to 1750. And this says nothing about what's going on, what could go on in the NFT market, which everybody assumed was dead. And everyone fell asleep while ETH was at 1200. <laughs> yeah, I mean... This has got to be interesting. Going back to the topic of Web3, right? Solana told you this was going to happen by going up 15% in two days. No one paid that any heed. Okay, Avalanche, which I want to go to on a four-hour chart. Okay, to try to get hidden pivot analysis from that chart, which I can't. <laughs> okay. What I can get is this. Actually, let's go to DeMarc. No, let's go here. So this is the tax loss selling give up trade that started on December 19th at 12. Okay. 
Now, I'm not a fundamental analyst. There was a whole reason why everyone liked Avalanche to begin with. Avalanche went to 10. No one wanted it. Now, let me ask, just ask a quick question. Where was Avalanche? And I did this yesterday with Solana and people were like, I, I, I responded to somebody's tweet that, you know, the guy, the guy tweeted, I think it's Rand Nooner is his name. You know, nobody wanted Solana at nine and now everyone wants it at 13. And I'm like, yeah, bro. Uh, because it could go to 45. In other words, just ask yourself this question. This was the start of the FTX debacle, right? So Avalanche was doing okay. It was rallying. And then on November 5th at 20, Avalanche peaked and went straight down. This give up trade had three legs, right? Down, range, down. In other words, this, remi this reminds me of Bitcoin 6,000, right? This area looks like when Bitcoin was at 6,000. And then you had the final crash, right? Now, it didn't quite lose half of its value like Bitcoin, but you get the point. Now, Avalanche is coming back into this area. It's cleared all this congestion. And if Avalanche is above $12.10, uh, can I just ask a quick question? Why why can't it go to 20? Like everybody who was going to sell Avalanche, have they already sold? And what's going to happen with crypto hedge funds when these things start going up? So let's just, I don't know, let's play along with the bears. Okay, these things are all dead. Like first they were blue chips, now they're dead. What happens if they stop go, start going up? Can crypto hedge funds just sit around and afford to watch all this stuff just go up and then not participate? And it's going to happen in stocks too. The only question is when does the thing in stocks accelerate and when are you going to have to put up with Fed uncertainty? They are probably going to have to deal with bad earnings and Fed uncertainty. Crypto does not have to deal with any of that. I mean, yeah, crypto is sensitive to the Fed, but the Bank of Japan just told you the Fed is done. And if the Bank of Japan didn't tell you, Salesforce told you. Well, you're like, Bill, what is Avalanche, the Bank of Japan, and Salesforce have in common okay they're telling you that speculative assets can start going up again because this tightening cycle is going to end bitcoin was down well in advance of the fed starting to tighten right well in advance like it had already topped so can't crypto start moving in ahead of the tightening cycle ending so can't you have like Jan Feb up or Jan up, then a bottom in March and then up again? Or maybe Bitcoin has a big Jan up and altcoins move for two months. Everyone's like, oh, wow, altcoin charts look pretty good. Yeah, they do. I talked to somebody yesterday. It was on with Crypto Love, a, uh, an awesome conversation. You know, definitely check that out on my Twitter and on his site, perfect timing on this video. Everyone's like, hey, it looks like a bottom. You're right. It does. How many people are trading it? Nobody. Because of revulsion. Okay. Uh, great to see you back online. SEO. Just found the channel today. Was watching you uh, at your old job. Yes, there were. Uh, I'm glad to see you back. Feel free to tell your friends. Uh, there were a lot of people who used to watch the market update, and I would love it if they come back. And needless to say, I appreciate everyone who is here. Definitely. Right? Subscribe to the channel. All right? It's time to make money. Uh, we're actually, I'm off to a good, we're off to a good start. Right? The Crypto Noble community is off to a good start. Okay? Trevor said, uh, I saw you on Crypto Love today. Glad I found your new channel. Yes. Yes. One of the themes I've been talking about and I'm getting pumped up about is that in crypto, you got to make money. You got to get while the getting's good. You got to get while the getting's good. And you can tell by what's going on here in Avalanche. Let's just get to the DeMarc work on this. Okay. So the way, the way you play this is you can do a trading play. 
and try to buy dips from here. Hopefully you get them. So QNT on the move again. QNT was trending a lot and now it's back again. It's back. Another altcoin to look at. A avalanche. Okay. Wow, look at this. Okay. So here's how the DeMarc systems work together. So first of all, you have a 13 bottom and a God candle on the four hour chart. Okay. Powerful. Then you have avalanche goes one through nine. Okay. Now, if you're going to have a big trend, the one through nine, the green one through nine is called the setup phase. It's just a DeMarc's quantitative way of measuring a trend. So if there's going to be a trend, you go one through nine. Then there should be a counter trend move in the other direction, which you can try to see this candle, right? Avalanche did dip and now has come back. And this could count one through 13, just like this counted one through 13 when it went down. Okay. So this is setting up like some kind of trend, right? That's got legs like for today, you know, and then after that. Uh, welcome all to the new people on the channel. Been absolutely pounding the table on this and no one believed me. And as you know, I'm okay with that. Because when no one believes you, that's when you get the big moves. Cardano. God, I had Cardano in here as a top altcoin. You know, do you really need a TA book to see that if Cardano... Cardano on a four hour chart. Okay. I bought the books. I'm going to study them. I know guys that call this like inefficiencies, right? You have a base and you have these huge gap moves down. You know, it start. this is just like equities, right? In 2009, it started with real estate and the worst stuff. The worst, the garbage was what rallied off the lows in 2008. It wasn't the good stuff. Right. Shizzy L from Philly is in the house. Welcome. Okay. Somebody's asking about helium. I'll try to get to that. Okay. Iron Alien would say, what would make you change your mind on market direction? Okay. Well, I'm going to stay with January up summer rally. What's going to create consternation is the Fed's going to probably try to talk all tough. And people are too worried about that right now is the news flow is constructive period, right? Now, what could also change my mind is that there's some sort of like massive reemergence in inflation, right? But that's why I want to do gold. Like as somebody I work with this morning said, you know, rates go up, gold goes up, rates go down, gold goes up. Gold just keeps going up. I did it all last year and I'm just letting it run. In the meantime, right? What would change my mind is if there was something that made gold and ETH go down which would probably be a mega hawkish Fed. And the Fed may have one last hawkish, you know, outburst. Who knows? Too many people are worried about that right now. Okay. People are asking about Crow. Okay. Link. Okay. So I'm just going to dive right into the requests the best I can. So Link. Okay, so chain link on the four hour chart, right? There's a lot of resistance at between 595 and six. And this is where that whole give up trade started from. Here's my guess on the chain links and all of these old coins. If there is going to be sort of a revival in Web3, it's going to roll out slowly. Like it started with Solana, now it's moving to Avalanche, ETH is probably next. Uh, you know, you can, you can look at your altcoin and see, has it moved or hasn't it? And just because it hasn't doesn't mean it won't in the middle of the month. So I don't think this is like an all of a sudden alt season. I think people are going to find their courage in their coin, right? Because I think Sailor saved Bitcoin. Sailor saved crypto and this Coinbase and Bank of Japan news all at once, right? Are going to force people to go from totally bearish 
to open-minded. Okay, Luke here, Kansas City in the house. Flux on the request list. Okay, let's look at Crow. Let's maybe try a, a weekly chart. Okay, so if you look at this, you got a 13 bottom, right? That was on the FTX debacle. And this week is a nine bottom. And there's the DeMarc zero, meaning a bottom. So everyone has given up on Crow. And if you know the fundamentals of Crow, the technicals actually look Okay, because there's a 13 bottom and a nine bottom, not investment advice, right? In other words, what goes up at a low? The stuff that everything, everybody hates. It was the same way in 2000, 2008. The stuff that rallied off the low, no one believed it. Like, why didn't everybody buy the S&P at 600? Because no one believed it. Because the stuff that rallied was the more speculative stuff. Flux weekly, same thing, major support at 44 cents. It's at 51. So if you, if you look at these things, like if you look at the daily chart, you might go, oh, gee, you know, it's up a lot. I don't know if I can buy it. Okay, yeah, there's resistance at 56. So it may get there. But if you've been suffering in this, I don't know, suffer for another three weeks and see what happens. Buffalo, New York is here. Nate, welcome. Okay. Um, Doge, right. Supposedly Tesla crashing is trending today. I would have thought that was trending yesterday. I put it in the thumbnail or we did. Okay. Or my artist did at Kathy crypto. Okay. Uh, along with assistance from my producer, who's become quite the AI artist. So we're actually bringing art and science together. Okay. Doge 13 bottom on the daily chart as of the 29th. On the daily chart, the resistance is at 11 cents. And I cannot believe, I cannot believe Elon Musk is going to sit there and take it on the chin. You have never made a living fading Elon Musk. Okay. Never. Okay. So, you know, when I look at Doge and I look at this daily chart, I'm like, wow, you know, this just seems really, really overdone on the downside. And it's percolating on the way up. And people may be looking at this market like everyone's up, up, Avalanche up 7%, can't buy it, too too expensive. Up, ETH up 4%, too scared to buy it. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, the only way you'll ever know is to try to get involved, not investment advice like Avalanche, right? So I'm talking, there's a huge spike up and then it comes back down and we'll see. Does the former ceiling act as support? So, I mean, we're back to like trading 101 again, right? If it goes up and then there's a dip, right? Is this, is this a false breakout or do they come back down and pound on this and then rotate higher? Or does Avalanche just start filling in all these inefficiencies quickly? In other words, you know, I, I want these streams to have somewhat of a shelf life, so I think, you know, up early January, mid-January makes sense, right? It may not be like Bitcoin stability, right? You know, if Bitcoin gets a cold, the market catches a flu. Well, if Bitcoin gets healthy, that can allow the rest of the market to perform because the printing press is on again, okay? The printing press is on again, okay? Okay, Matic, Matic. You know, short sellers were after this, something terrible. They covenanted every day on the stream, even though it's not exactly, you know, it's not exactly my thing, but this is like Katie bar the door. I mean, you're at a DeMarc three here. You could have six more up days. And like I said, you're starting to move into, I believe the term is inefficiencies. I used to call them air pockets, right? This is high school physics. Speed, magnitude, and direction. What goes down one way, when it goes back up, it just goes back up the same way. <laughs> right? So, I mean, this was the, oh my God, on FTX. I have said ad nauseum that the FTX and SBF situation is going to mean 
he is going to roll over on every negative crypto regulator. Every single one. His trial isn't until October. They can just leak it all out slowly. Or the government could find these guys and we could find out who quits or gets fired. Th those guys are going to get found out because, oh, the decentralized part of crypto, booga booga. Yeah, no, wrong. It was the centralized part of crypto trying to pay off the centralized government authority. So decentralized plays, Matic, if people are short or bearish, no reason why this can't unwind the FTX debacle and go to 88 cents, right? ADA is back. Chizzy, Fed minutes at two o'clock today. Thank you for that heads up. So, you know, we're going to see what happens, right? The market's rallying in advance of the Fed talking, right, from their minutes from the meeting. I don't know if they were hawkish in the minutes for the meeting, if that creates the dip or if that creates the dip tomorrow, because again, you know, 7,000 people from Salesforce, that's a lot of people. It's a lot of people for Jerome Powell to think about, right? They probably weren't thinking about it last time, but that news changes things, even though the market is going to, the algos will react to that news. KDA, the next level is 92 cents. My, my sense is this thing's going to go and attack resistance and then put people in a bad position where they go, gee, I want to get involved, but now it's at resistance. Like bear markets kill people and bull markets make it hard on you too. Okay. Okay. So XYO, classic case of that. Okay, this was the previous fourth or the start of the give up trade. And if I'm reading this right, XYO Network just took off and retested the previous fourth, which also happens to be a DeMarc resistance line. And I think every crypto is going to look like this. So the bigger the give up trade, the bigger the rip up, right, to the start of the give up trade. Okay. Try and remember that Michael Saylor may have just saved the crypto market with an underrated headline. An underrated headline. So if the Fed comes in and does something scary, the printing press is already running. They're already trying to bring Web3 to Bitcoin, which should get somebody talking about Web3 because Web2 is in trouble. They can't grow revenue anymore and the Fed is squeezing them. And this idea that People from high tech companies should go fill in openings at Chick-fil-A is crazy. It's a recipe for a hard landing. So the Fed is going to learn really quick about the implications of their tightening cycle. That's it for today. I will see you tomorrow.